John B in the building was goody. Hey, hey, hey! Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful to see you moving like short. that, brother. <laughs> I wasn't sure. What's going on, everybody? Make some noise, John B in the building. What's up, man? How you doing? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. What's going welcome, on? Welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, it's good to see you, man. I, you know, follow you on Twitter and whatnot, so mm -hmm. I know I'm what sorry. you've been going through. Uh, sure. You know, how you feeling? Uh, feeling good. Uh, I guess, I mean, you asked me before the show, I had like COVID for two and a half weeks. <laughs> so I pushed through that and then, uh, uh, you know, back to work, everything's good. Um, and then of course, election season's here and uh, pushed through that and, and here we are. Now I'm here. Hey man, I'm glad to that you recovered. Honestly, two and a half weeks is a long, long time. That sucks. And like, especially now that it's like two years removed from like the initial uh, variant and the initial wave of pandemic, like to hear someone getting sick for that long, like, damn, that really sucks, man. I'm glad that you're back and healthy. Hell yeah, Dean. Hell yeah. Look at this beautiful landscape. Yeah, dude, the, you're. Uh, <laughs> you <I> said <laughs> I wanted to put you in the in the mountains of Wyoming. I love it. Yeah. My hometown. Yes. <laughs> that is <laughs> Colombian J. What's up, Coco? How you doing, man? What's up? What's up? Welcome, welcome. Uh Queen and Leo said, Why John Beath got teeth whiter than Mary Kate and Ashley in the winter though? I got a good dentist. Bling bling. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Um, yeah, man, it's awesome. For those that don't know who you are, please do give yourself like a brief introduction. I know who you are. You've been on the yeah. show before, but please do let us know. Uh, well, we're, we're, I'm one half of Talk Limited. The other half of Talk Limited is in the chat. It's Courtney 808. Um, we are a um, we're a network of different shows, so you can actually find us. You can find us on Twitch, but we don't stream as much anymore. Um, Talk Limited is spelled T V L K L T D. Um, you can find us on Twitter, T V L K L T D. We have that eight dollar check mark, so you know it's us. <laughs> um, but but mostly follow us on uh, YouTube. We're, we're making the jump to YouTube. Um, YouTube.com/slash T V L K L T D. Talk Limited. Um, right now we have a block of shows, so on Tuesdays you'll catch um, Sue, Sue Perspective, and Courtney uh, doing uh, um, uh, Tea Talk and Girl Talk, talking about um, life and various different things from their perspective. Uh, Tuesday, uh, Wednesdays, that's Tuesdays. Wednesdays it's Courtney and I. Uh, we just finished uh, Little Nightmares 2. The nice thing about doing everything on YouTube um, is that it's it's uh, it's all it's all archived for you. So yep. if you folks want to go back and watch our videos now, you can and you can be a part of the conversation because we go back and we 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 look at our the comments and we we uh, we interact with the comments too. So um, you know, be a part of the community. Be there. Um, a link to our Discord is on every single video. Also, um, tonight is Thursday. If you wanna if you wanna lead lead the uh, the the posse at the end of the stream here. At uh, 7 o'clock Pacific, we're going to be talking gaming. So Talk Gaming is on uh, Thursdays. We talk about the latest video game news over the past week or so. Tonight, I'm actually trying Sonic Frontiers on the Switch. Mm -hmm. So join Christian Maybe. and myself as we do that. And then on Fridays, it's whatever Courtney and I want to do. So Wednesdays and, and Fridays are kind of up in the air. It's whatever Courtney and I want to do um, since it's our it's our channel, our show. We do, we, we do, we do what we want. But we are a um, we are a progressive community. We are um, sex positive, body positive. That was how we were founded. We used to have a sex positive show um, called Let's Talk, which right now just lives and breathes on Twitter. Um, and um, we're very, we're very uh, open-minded and a welcoming community. Uh, we're not a positive vibes community. We're a very real community. So uh, we will put you in your place if it needs to be. Hey, I like that, man, because sometimes yeah. it gets overly too positive where it's just like yeah, that's, that's all the real. damn time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not real. We it's understand not that there's all sorts of. Yeah, there's all sorts of walks of life, and sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes you just have to be real with each other. And uh, we are like that. We're very, we're a very open door community, although not necessarily our door. But and there's always, there's always a shoulder. So, hey, yeah, man, shit, shit is. Uh, it's good to be around people that just keep it real because, like, you know, a lot of things are fucked up right now in the world. Like, and yeah, sometimes, like, doom scrolling, which shout out to Queen of Wands, put me onto that term. Like, just scrolling down your yeah. phone endlessly, just looking at bad news. Like, that's very real. Eco anxiety. Very, I love doing that. I love doing that. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, I was. So, the day after the election results, which we'll talk about later, I woke up like seven in the morning because we had to get up for work. And I just, yeah. like, I ran to my phone. And I was just like, who's the governor? Like, I had to make sure New York was still blue. And, like, it was just like the rest of the day was just what's the results what's the results what's the results and like you know that's also not good for you because uh you get into a cycle of just reading bad news and you get real pessimistic about stuff 
Sorry, um, I'm being told that my audio is coming from the wrong channel, so give me a second. Oh, yeah, no worries, man. Do um, I sound better now? Oh, yeah, whoa, you sound way better. I okay. should realize yeah, that wasn't I, your microphone. My computer uh, reset, restarted. Uh, thank you, producer Courtney, in the background for that. Hey. Um, and it just reset all of my mixer quality. So, okay, now I'm here. Now I'm back. Hopefully, you all folks were able to hear me regardless. I apologize for the quality there. But, um, yeah, were you up late looking, waiting for the results or what? Um, I didn't stay up too late. Um, yeah. I just woke up the next morning early and like that was like the first thing I did. I didn't stay up super late. I watched <clears> some <throat> election coverage on YouTube and stuff, but like it was around like nine o'clock. So things were still rolling in and stuff. And like there was just a bunch of main races that I cared about and then side yeah. ones that like I cared about later. But definitely first thing I did in the morning. Yeah, I've been I've been trying to uh, keep an eye on my local race. Um, it's only 37 percent counted. Um, my county is notoriously slow for counting. Uh, for Damn. those who don't know, I'm from California. Um, and I do, I do, I mean, full transparency, I do vote blue, but I am, uh, I'm very much, a, um, a socialist or a social Democrat. I lean towards a lot of communist ideas, which is, is probably, um, not the most favorable thing. And I think that a lot of it comes from, uh, being working class and being, uh, understanding that, you know, we shouldn't be divided from these racial lines. Uh, there's a lot of class divide right now. And I think that's, that's the biggest conversation that doesn't happen for some reason. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of politics right now divides us by what's the black vote doing? What's the Latino vote doing? What's the white vote? And there's no such thing as the white vote, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But they never talk about the working class. And I think that's the hardest thing right now. You know, when you, when you told me like discussing, um, you know, the, uh, the Hispanic vote, um, it, 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 it is very polarizing when you look at, let's say, like the border cities in, in Texas mm -hmm. and how they're fed a lot of uh, very um, doom, like you want to talk about like doom scrolling, like all of their all of their attack ads are against immigration. They're all against um, just people looking to better their way of life. They're they're criminalizing their existence, which is uh, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that these um, these Mexican-Americans look at that and and depending on the the society that they're in or the or the or the circles they run with they look at this as as a positive for their community well if we can you know if we can demonize the ones that are trying to get here that'll be better for us mm -hmm. you know and it's it's a very it's a very scary uh a, a very scary way of thinking um because that is that is that is the working class divide mm -hmm. um and i think that if if we take a look at who we really are uh, we are working class americans mm -hmm. and uh there's more of us than there are of of billionaires mm -hmm. uh and and uh we need i think we need to take a closer look at that hell yeah and that is definitely uh like something i want to look into because i know it varies um latino voting patterns depending on you know latinos in florida vote very differently than like latinos in california or latinos mm -hmm. in nevada or latinos in texas so it's different but i think there are overall messages that um democrats can push that would help just on like a national level uh help them up their their uh their votes with that community so you know mm -hmm. even though it's different in each state um how the latino community votes like i think they're just like overall messages kind of like what you said working class messages that would help that i would mm -hmm. love to talk about later um just mm -hmm. before we get into that can you tell us a little bit about like your childhood um how it was growing up uh what the demographic was around you uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's weird. You know, I, I'm mixed, um, uh, Mexican and American Jewish. And there was always this, uh, kind of, I'm not, I was never white. Like I, growing up, I, I knew I was never, I wasn't white. Um, even though at one point in time, um, Jewish was finally accepted as white, which mm -hmm. that is in this, in this climate is going away again. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, I, you know, I was surrounded by my mom's family mostly in LA. I was raised in LA, so all of all of my primos and we're all Mexican, um, uh, Mary, um, Mary, uh, half El Salvadorian, which I didn't, I don't know too much about um, that uh, because it, whenever we would visit our family, we would visit our family in Mexico. So I always yeah. just associated them as as Mexican, but. Um, you know, I went to Spanish immersion school in LA. So a lot of my classmates were, um, very much exposed to Hispanic culture, uh, from various, um, from various countries in, in, um, in, uh, uh, Central America and South America, as well as Mexico. So, um, even, even early on, we were taught, um, you know, countries in South America, we were taught the differences and where they are and that sort of stuff. And, um, uh, just my upbringing is was very is is very uh, Mexican, uh, you know. Um, 
uh, your first generation piñatas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I'm first generation American. Yeah, so technically, right? So because on my dad's side, everybody's everybody's American for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's kind of they emigrated three generations ago. Like I don't know anything. Mm-hmm. That I don't know anything different. But like being on my mom's side, like I got I got very much. Um, you know, I was raised being uh, speaking Spanish to my mom and going to Mexico every summer and Christmas and um, all my family on on her side is Mexican. So. That's what I knew. That's that's basically what I know. And um, uh, that I mean, you went every summer. You said that. Ha- so, could you explain how that like kind of affected your um, childhood? Because I remember I went to Dominican Republic only like one summer when I was like eleven or twelve, and that did like influence. I think I was in middle school around that age, and like I yeah. came back, listened to more Spanish music for like a summer or two. Like it eventually <laughs> sure. faded away because I just had a bunch of like white friends where I grew up, but initially yeah. when i did come back it did kind of like influence what what uh i was doing when i got back so how was that like going every summer and then coming back to america uh i mean you see the changes i remember when i was very young i hated going because they didn't even have mcdonald's you know what i mean like it wasn't it, it you you see the evolution and now i go back to that little town and they have everything mm-hmm. so um it everything's very americanized now when you go there but um you know it, it it taught me a way of life that I probably wouldn't have gotten here. Um, it taught me to understand, um, you know, what it is to, to to eat what you have. You know, even though I'm, I'm still a very picky eater, um, but like you, could, I couldn't be too picky when I was visiting because there was no fast food around, mm-hmm. um, unless you go to the big cities, which you know we would stop at on the way there. But my family didn't live in those big cities, mm-hmm. um, and. Um, you know, uh, going camping, going fishing, that sort of stuff. And, uh, and just doing things that I wouldn't do here because I lived, I lived in the city Mm -hmm. out here and they were experiences that I know were very common for my cousins and it was different for me. So even like the simplest things like, um, taking the soda bottles back to La Tiendita, you know, that was an experience because it's not something that we do here in America. Mm -hmm. Uh, at least not in California. We don't, there's, there's, you know, there's the fact that they have tienditas in uh, residential areas is very cool to me. You know, yeah. you can just make, you can make the facade of your home, um, uh, uh, like a little store, a, a store. Yeah, uh-huh. you know, and you know, you know that it's a store because they put the Carta Blanca beer sign on the outside, and you get you walk in, you get your sabritas, and, mm-hmm. and yeah, and you, and you, um, and that's their way of life. And I've, you know, and I think that I'm very much shaped by all of that because. Um, uh, I, I like I love I love I love mini marts like uh, uh, and I and I love um, uh, uh, souvenir shops and I think it's because it, it that's to me is like they found they found what they want like they didn't need to to just to be anything else but working and they were happy you know what I mean and my family owns uh, a great business or or was a great business at the time but like they, basically what they do is they provided the wood for the railroads so those big long planks of wood mm-hmm. that, that that's what their that's what their business provided so it was a very very good business very lucrative business at the time I don't think it's doing too well now because they're they're running out of that type of wood or they're not funded anymore or something it's just very bad mm-hmm. um, but like yeah, like my family, they just they were very, uh, they they knew what was what was what was gonna put food on the table. It wasn't glamorous, and, and but they but they 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 kept at it, and and you know they they had a very nice home in in Mexico, a very nice home. Like I mean, going back home to my apartment in California when I was a kid, and I'd look at like the homes that they lived in. Like I want my grandmother's home. It's a beautiful home. It's made out of wood. Um, it's two stories. It's got a balcony. Like it's a beautiful home. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just not in the best. It's just not in the best part of of Mexico. But yeah. like, I would live there. I wouldn't care. Just beautiful. Like, I, I love I love that country a mm-hmm. lot. And I wish I hope for the best because I know that there it's a corrupted um, government there. So. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, man, those like little memories of of those like little pueblos are are really, um, really cool. Like you said, because you know I grew up suburbs of New York City, so like pretty close to one of the big, biggest cities in the world. Going to those mm-hmm. little towns and seeing those little tiendas that you're talking about where uh, even like my wife's grandma has the same thing where it's um, 
a store in the front and then in the back of it is what's it called her house and that's where she lives yeah, and you know home, yeah. every morning she opens it up and she'll sell like little candies uh I love it. deodorants um toothbrushes Everything. just literally yeah any any uh essentials and candy food Soda. Yeah, yeah, everything, man. Everything, and everything. They give such a vibe of like, you know, everybody that goes to that shop knows who she is, knows the oh, yeah. family, knows them by last name, knows everybody in the town. And like, it doesn't feel like, you know, at a 7 Eleven, like, it's just somebody working there. Like, there's no I'll real tie you, to it. Your tiendita was popping, though, if you had an arcade unit or um, uh, um, a slot machine. Mm. That in Mexico, because I mean, gambling is not fully. Uh, uh, legal or illegal in that sense in mexico but like uh-huh. every time every once in a while you're going to tiendita and they have a full-on slot old machines. school slot machine it's like, <laughs> oh shit this one this one must be popping you know or like they'll have uh, street fighter 2 arcade in there that one mm-hmm. is popping everyone's hey, in that one you know hell I mean? yeah <laughs> um yes yeah, said yes that tienda has fed all of my uncles and aunts shout out to my grandma for I real that was such a cool communal feeling to just see yes. everybody know each other and go in there and buy things from each other um and then another question that was in here uh you know, what do you think of that Americanization of that town and of that area now that you are an adult going back? Like, you know, I think like with gentrification, yeah. obviously, same thing. Like sometimes it brings more safe, safeness and safety to the area, but it obviously displaces a lot of people. So how do you see it there? Well, th- this Pueblito was a small town um, and it wasn't it wasn't necessarily unsafe to begin with. Um, I think the only people that you really had to worry about were the police, because if they saw you out, um, out, they would just kind of harass you. Um, but um, I don't like I don't like the Americanization too much, um, because I feel like the the feel and the uniqueness is gone. Um, I wouldn't speak for for myself though. I mean, I'd have to ask how they feel. Locals, my family that still lives there, because you know, I'm sure that they have a lot of norms that they didn't have before. Like they didn't have a Walmart before when I used to visit there. They mm-hmm. just had you know, um, supermercados and like, but now they have a Walmart and like I'm pretty sure that's changed a lot of lives. Yeah. I'm sure it's added jobs, jobs. Mm-hmm. you know, and like so I can't I can't really speak for it for myself. As far as the nostalgia goes, I don't like it. I, I really I feel like it didn't need to happen. But I'm all I am also a big believer in like, um, you know, uh, uh, supporting the working class. If 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 there's if there's no jobs and jobs need to come in, and you got uh, it, unfortunately these big companies are going to be the ones to provide the jobs if if there's if nobody else is going to do it. So I have no idea what the population is like. But if it grew, um, and if it continues to grow, then they need work. So. Yeah, I mean, for sure, man. You know, bring on the Taco Bell and Pizza Huts, I guess. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's the tough thing. Like, uh, and that's what I've seen a lot of uh, articles recently. There's been since the pandemic, a lot of remote workers been moving to Mexico. I think they said that this year was like the most American visas that they've given ever since they started yeah. like tracking that. And it's because of there's just so many remote Americans that are moving there, still earning U.S. dollars and being like, whoa, my like dollar goes way further than here. Like the cost of yeah. living is significantly lower. And, uh, you know, a lot of locals that drives up their rent prices and it's just created this effect where it's like everything has gone up. But then the counter argument is always, oh, you know, we're putting money into the economy just by being here and buying goods and stuff like that. So it's always very interesting. Uh, Quick question from Queen and Leo. What's the most frustrating thing about Latino culture? Um, I think as a as a whole, politically, um, it have as a whole uh i would say pol- uh, politically um it had it would have to be the reliance on conservatism and their values i think it's very i think it's very frustrating um that conversations like um um uh, acceptance of lgbtq individuals um is one that uh, we have a really hard time with um in uh in various latino communities i would i would include uh, Mexican is a big one. I think Cuban is really largely uh, conservative mm-hmm. um, for some reason. Um, and I just think that the the way of thinking is very um, is very backwards. It's not accepting as much as as much as um, a lot of Latino cultures rely on religion and you know not all, but the biggest ones are Catholic and and Christian. Uh, but I mean, there are there are like you know Argentinians who are Jewish, and that, and I'm sure there's other religions out there. But mm-hmm. a lot of them being Catholic and Christian, there's there's really no acceptance for for um, a different way of thinking. And I think that's probably the most frustrating is how ingrained religion is into um, their way of life, and it it 
influences a lot of wrong decisions. I think that thankfully we did not get this alleged um, Latino um, um, red wave mm-hmm. that we were expecting. Uh, the vote was allegedly going to lean more red for the first time mm-hmm. um, in Latino communities. And I'm thankful that did not happen. Um, but a lot of it is coming from this conversation of like, um, you know, uh, trans people are grooming your children. Like what a terrible what a terrible thing to say and 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 it spreads because um and you know my mom is older and she's hispanic and she's guilty of this they just believe whatever the fuck they read on facebook mm-hmm. and i don't know if you've ever looked at you know your hispanic relatives posting on facebook it's some of the <laughs> most it i don't know where they're getting it from yeah. i mean actually i do know where they're getting it from a lot of it's being pushed from the conservative media that that is um That is like Univision, which is wild to me. Like, why are they saying these things without any context? Mm -hmm. And it's it's because they know that it, they know that it sells and uh, it's very frustrating and and they know that they're Spanish language. So the English speaking, uh, uh, maybe younger generation in the homes aren't going to, aren't going to know what, you know, uh, what mom, what, you know, mama, abuelita, what they're hearing. And it's like, that's a, that's a problem. I think that, that, that's a huge problem. But yeah, I, you know, sure. I, I I catch myself correcting my mom on a lot of things, mm-hmm. um, and I think that that's 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 the most frustrating thing is that they they they, they rely heavily on on their on their religious beliefs, and mm-hmm. I have nothing wrong. I have nothing against religion except for I don't feel like it's it. I don't think it belongs in in uh, the political sector at all. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there needs to be more acceptance, and yeah. and that's missing a, a, a lot. Um, yeah, I don't For know if sure. that answers the question, but it is very frustrating. Yeah, no, that's a hundred percent. Uh, you know, something very frustrating with the community. Uh, I stopped using Facebook so long ago. At this point, the only reason I think I don't delete it is because I made so many. Like, there are so many other accounts on other websites that were like sign in with Facebook, and I was like, yeah. oh, I don't know, that seems easy as fuck. So I would just click that, and now I have a bunch of accounts tied to that Facebook. But uh, honestly, that shit is boomer book to me. Like that shit is just literally the only reason I, I post on there is just for family that's in Dominican Republic or uh, family on my wife's side that's in Colombia, so that they can you know keep up with us. But I don't use that shit anymore. And like, say I know it's the same thing with WhatsApp too. I was gonna ask you, why do you think they are so susceptible? to that type of propaganda and to that type of messaging uh like is it just um you know kind of like a reluctance to change kind of like a fear of change wanting to stay in like how things are more traditional um what do you think about that and shout out what up persona how you doing i think a lot of it has to come with the risk that they've already taken to come here so um and not wanting to and 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 having a fear so there's always this fear like i i heard very recently like when you're first generation um, you don't have any dreams. Your dreams, your dreams are your parents' dreams. Like they sacrificed everything to bring you here, mm-hmm. uh, to have or to have you here. And your dreams are now to get a, a well-paying job and keep your keep your nose to the ground and um, and be a good worker. Um, because otherwise, the government will send you back. You know, it's very strange. It's a very strange kind of idea uh, of of we're never really we don't ever really belong. We're not re- we're not actually American, um, even though you know. I guarantee you any 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 natural born citizen myself included could not could not take and pass the citizenship test there's no way yeah for sure um but my mom had to do it you know what i mean and i and 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 um i think that the, a lot of it just stems from fear fear of not of not uh of not belonging not fitting in so what do you do you 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 take the mass media that is that is uh shown at you and you say and they they tell you what's normal and if you're abnormal you're going to stand out and you're going to cause a problem and if you cause a problem um you're going to get arrested or you're going to get uh, deported or like i don't i don't quite i think there's a lot of i think there's a lot of psycho psychological uh trauma that that is based on this and it's this idea of, of normalcy and having to fit in mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is and i think our generation knows this now and it took a lot it took a lot of of um uh, a growing pains to get here because even when we were growing up, you know, if you didn't like something, it was gay. And like now we understand we don't say that, right? We don't, yeah. we don't, we don't use that kind of language. Mm. Uh, we're accepting of gay people. And, but there was a lot of pain, a lot of pain for, for um, the gay community and growing up because we used it in such a negative con, uh, con, uh, 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 connotation mm-hmm. that 
now are the next generation kind of understands it's like <clears throat> well there's 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 too many extremes and everyone's offended and this and that and you know um there's mm -hmm. there's a lot more acceptance going on so um i was gonna say too like i know you're a big eminem fan like hip-hop fan sure. like that's kind of also like you know i grew up listening to that and it was so engraved into it like you know just puff your chest out be strong be tough like you can't be gay like the f slur all mm -hmm. the time like that was super super engraved and like you go back and you watch like comedy from the 90s early 2000s like it was mm -hmm. just so unabashedly just like homophobic and just like oh yeah it's crazy so like you know product of our environments and stuff so i'm glad that like has been a big change and stuff and and um, um, I wonder, like, because it's interesting, Latin America in the last few years has had, like, you know, you've seen these countries that have placed, um, they've reversed abortion bans. They've kind of started moving towards uh, gay marriage, like yeah. Colombia, um, Mexico as well. Like, there's a bunch of different countries in Latin America. But it seems like certain demographics, when they get to the United States, they're just like, nah, fuck that shit. Like, they step onto the soil here and they're like, fuck yes. everyone else. Well, here I'll tell, and that's because they can, right? There, mm -hmm. There's 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 freedom of speech in the United States, and there's not necessarily freedom of speech everywhere else. There's things that you can say, um, you know, amongst friends and and amongst peers, but there's things that you probably wouldn't say in the workplace or out in the street, you know, in fear of of any kind of repercussions. And I think that that's where, fe where that's where freedom of speech really kind of exists in the United States is that yes, you can go out and you can you can get on a platform, not necessarily Twitter, but I mean like in real life and you can say, you know what, I don't think gay people should get married. And you're not gonna get arrested for that. You know, there's there's no there's no fear of repercussion for something like that. Mm -hmm. Um or even the reverse, you know, saying all abortions should be legal. You know, there, there's no repercussion for that. You can do you can say that. Um and that's what that's what true freedom of speech is. Um these other countries, uh, and I can't really speak for what they're what they're saying, but they 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 just kind of bite their tongue about these things. So, like you mentioned, like um, a lot of these uh, um, Latin American countries are now accepting gay marriage as law. And I remember I was listening to a conversation, and a guy goes, <clears throat> you, know, hey, "You know, exactly what you said. Like, hey, you know, your country now legalized gay marriage. Like, how do you feel about that?" And he's like, "I don't believe in gay marriage." Mm -hmm. He's here, he's like, living but, in the United States. Yeah, he's now. Yeah, he was. He's from there, and he's living here in the United States. Like, I don't believe in gay marriage. Mm -hmm. It's like, but but it's a law. You know, it's a law that they can do it. And his re the response was like, "You can make a law to make donkeys fly, but it's still not natural." Oh my god! And, right. And so, and that's kind of where the mindset is, and that's something that he took with him, left his country, brought it here, and it's ingrained in him. And it's kind of one of those things where it's really it's really backwards thinking, and it's and I don't know if if I don't know what the reason they left that country for, whether it's financial or whatever it may be, but they let but they took their ideologies with it, and they're and they're dropping them here, here where we're supposed to have um, the most open mindedness, you know, freedom, uh, freedom of choice, freedom of religion, that sort of stuff, where where one can say I will do what I do as long as I'm not hurting anybody. And you do what you do as long as you're not hurting anybody. And we should be able to coexist. Instead, we're having this kind of like back and forth between the most narrow minded types of people trying to take away these rights that we've it's taken decades to establish here. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like it's just not something that that should that it, it, I don't think it's, it's for the general public to decide what uh, another person can should do with their private life. So. Absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. We had another question before that I thought was really good. Um, mm -hmm. But first, let me read this message from Persona. I think the biggest problem in our country, in our community, in politics is that everything is black or white, blue or red. And reality in life is not uh, in this format. Yeah, man, is a lot is a lot of polarization, which is what I, I wanted to bring up this interesting fact that I read before. Um, it basically said, uh, what's it called? Uh, shit, where is it? Fewer than half of Latinos say that they see a major difference between the parties, despite living in this deeply polarized era. So, like, you know, the same way that you're saying everybody's looking at things black and white, that's mm -hmm. proven to not be uh, the case for Latinos. So it seems like less than half of Latinos um, 
view a major difference between the parties as in like oh you know they're both kind of like the same and um yeah. you know i've seen this a lot online i think this is the type of thinking that usually leads to people saying oh it's not even worth going to vote like if you support one party it's basically supporting the other party they're both corrupt blah blah, blah. i've seen that type of thinking um you know people saying i'm not gonna go vote what's the point uh at one point i think i might have even felt like that i might have been pessimistic about stuff and been like ah you know you know democrats are just controlled opposition and they're just there to make the republicans uh you know not look as crazy and like i thought like that until you realize like there is provable demonstrable things that are different between each administration that the another uh party won't do so you could see it in the things that biden's administration has done that trump would have never have done or things that trump did that biden would never do like it's there are clear things there that obviously it's not going to be the same if you choose one party over the other but uh i think a lot of latinos think like this you know they think uh oh you know i think i heard it from somebody in my family the other day uh you know they're all crooks like it doesn't really matter who i vote for they're all crooks in the end and like i think that type of mentality usually is what leads to people not going out to vote and uh you know how do you think we combat that well, I'll tell you this. I think, unfortunately, the people with that kind of mindset, and I don't know who you, which family member this was, but just based on that kind of kind of sentiment, um, that person is probably better off not voting because I have a feeling they probably lean more conservative. Mm-hmm. Um, just just based on that comment alone. Mm-hmm. And, and here's the thing: the people who don't want to vote because they feel like there's no difference between the parties, it's because they see their platforms and they realize they're unaffected any either way. And that's that's the worst part. There's no yeah. empathy. There's no empathy in voting. I think that it's I think it's very odd in this day and age to have people in your in your community in your life um uh, maybe even in your family and decide and decide to vote against their best interests mm-hmm. just because it doesn't reflect your world view. Um you know to say that a um a woman should carry a term whether whether or not she um you know uh wanted to have that baby is very strange to me. Um, when you know uh, that the richest of people have never had to deal with that kind of ordeal, um, when you know that there are things like uh, uh, I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to say anything on your platform that, that that I shouldn't say, but there are not every type of pregnancy is is a is a wonderful pregnancy, and sometimes you you, you know your it's your body your choice. You need to be able to take care of that. Mm-hmm. It's very strange to me that you may have a uh, a trans coworker that you get along with, or there are gay people in your life, yet you want to take away their basic human rights by voting to get rid of um, their existence. It's very uh, it's very strange to me that people don't vote with empathy. They look at it and they say it's not for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's just get rid of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or uh, you know this doesn't affect me. Why why would I vote? You know why would I vote for this? And mm-hmm. I, I feel like the reason why that the the Republican Party exists is because there's a lot of <laughs> I don't uh, I'm never gonna be allowed back on the show. There's a lot of <laughs> mental illness in this in this world, and I feel like a lot of it comes with um, uh, uh, traits like um, uh, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, um, narcissism, um, uh, and, and that that th- those sort of traits. And I feel like when you have those types of people who are able to vote and they're seeing a message that set that uh, that goes for fear, uh, you know, we we want to get uh, we got we want to get uh, we, uh, trans teachers out of uh, out of schools because they're grooming your children and they believe this shit. They don't have children. They don't care. But these are the same type of people that go to schools that they don't have they don't even have kids registered in who are just going on 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 the podium and saying things like we shouldn't have uh we we shouldn't have litter boxes in in yeah. the restrooms that's not that fucking happening so dumb. <laughs> that's, it's not happening it's just some it's just some bullshit that somebody said online and because they have they have no way they they have no way of just dis, dis, deciphering what's real and what's not mm-hmm. they have no critical thinking skills um that they they rely on everything that they see and and these are the people that vote um and you know you as soon as you push back just a little bit on at least the ones who think a little bit they just kind of resort to well that's just not for me mm-hmm. and it's like well think about the people around you that it is for mm-hmm. maybe stop thinking about yourself for a minute but they can't because they they have a very a very uh, very skewed way of, of thinking in life 
You know, a lot of them are, are trying to get their next buck, their next come up. A lot of them think that they're embarrassed billionaires who should already be, uh, uh, you know, uh, rich as all hell. And I don't know. It, oh, it's, it's, my bad. One second. I forgot to turn off my... Uh, I forgot to turn off my friggin' uh, sounds. Thank you so much for the sub, Queen and Leo, but shit. I forgot how to... I forgot how to turn this shit off. <laughs> One second. It's all good, man. Oh, fuck this all right. Is it a long sound or what? No, it's off now. It's off now. No, it's all good. Thank you so much. Um, I don't mind. I, but, I mean, um, if it's super quick, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, but, yeah, it's gone now. Um, Nah, dude, yeah, that's 100%. Uh, I agree, but, you know, so somebody said in here, I'm going to throw this in there. Sure. Because uh, it's good to get the uh, other side as well. Wait, I heard this from many people around me. This is from Persona. If you're voting conservative, don't vote. So should the Democrats be the only part? Or should we start a new party? And if so, why hasn't there been a new party? So, like, what do you say to, you know, I guess people who do empathize a little bit more with, like, conservative values or, you know, the message? Well, I mean, but I mean, if they could tell me what a conservative value is and I'll hear it, but I don't I don't. What is a conservative value from as far as I can tell from the last platform that we've had, a conservative value consists of deplatforming anything they don't believe in. And a democratic value is giving anybody who wants a voice a voice, unless, of course, it's uh, a hate speech uh, or racist. Those types of voices don't deserve a voice. That's not that's mm -hmm. not that doesn't stand for freedom of speech. Um, but if but but if you want to talk about a conservative value, I would say let's talk about a conservative value. Now, as far as the two party system goes, it is broken. We need ranked choice voting. We need to be able to choose uh, one, two, and three. Like, I like this person. If they don't win, well, then I want this person to get my vote. If they don't win, then this person gets my vote. That's what we need. The two-party system is broken. But the thing is, it's bought. Both the Democrats and the Republicans are completely bought. Now, the reason why, and I don't, you might have came in a little bit later because I didn't see your name sooner. I'm not a Democrat. Um, I, I'm not a Democrat, but I do vote blue. And that's because the Republicans... From the last two elections, two years and four years ago, all they want to do is take away every other person's way of living. Now, if you want to stand there and tell me that that's a conservative value, then we're not going to meet eye to eye. That's just the way it is. And, you know, if you want to say, well, conservative values are, are picking yourself up by your by your bootstraps and whatever the fuck, then we need to talk about a living wage because I'm tired of picking up myself from the boots bootstraps why millionaires and billionaires continue to make money off of my back now, a real conservative value would probably be something along the lines of of um you know uh you know um less taxes or whatever whatever the fuck i, I the fact of the matter is we the working class have been have been taxed more than any other uh millionaire or billionaire class now the day that that the conservatives open their eyes and say that the working class deserve the money that they make or they deserve to make more money, then maybe we can pay more attention. But instead, it seems to be, well, gays don't belong in the military and I don't want trans people in sports. Like, that's fucking bullshit. Get that shit out of here. Those aren't real. Those aren't real causes. For sure. And, you know, if I were to place my shoes in like a conservative, like if, if there were a conservative here to, to argue or whatever, I imagine they would say family values and stuff like that, which is sure. something that I always thought that Democrats could have fucking hammered away this year. Like, this was the one year that they could have yeah. been like, we gave you extended uh, child tax credits. We were the party that gave you more money if you had kids, and we said, hey, you know all that work you're doing to have your kids? We're going to give you more money each month. I thought that this was the cycle that they could finally be like, we are the party of family values. We are the ones who care about kids in schools. We care mm -hmm. about giving you money. We're the party that believes in paternal uh, leave, in federally uh, mandated paternal leave. And the Republicans, what are they the party of? They're the parties that want you to work 10 million gig jobs so that you can never mm -hmm. see your family, so that when you send your kids to school, you got to be worried if they're going to get shot. Like, I really, really thought that this was the cycle where they could have drove that home. And I know that that's something that really lands with Latinos is that whole, like, family, like that concept of just family values. And I thought, yeah. like, this is it. They have a shit. So they have a resume of things that they get. They can list off. And Republicans, you know, the thing with them is, it's it's never, hey, this is what we're gonna do. It's always, oh my God, aren't you afraid of what's going on right now? And Democrats are in party, so you should be afraid of them. Hey, what are we gonna do? I'm not sure. We don't actually have a plan, but you should totally be afraid of those guys. Like, yeah. I really thought that that was like the perfect time for the messaging. And like they, you know, those Democrats. We're gonna talk about Florida in a little bit, but um. I want to know like what you think about like wh how can Democrats get better at messaging that will target the Hispanic community? Yeah. 
Well, that's the thing. The Democrats don't have any kind of messaging. Mm -hmm. Their messaging is they don't have uh, a, a, a real. So the thing about Republicans, the, the only good thing about Republicans when it comes to the politicians is that they all have the same talking points. And it's yeah. an easy thing to do when it's all a lie. So they can just repeat the same lie over and over and over again. The problem with Democrats is that they don't have those talking points. And I think, that, and I, I saw Bernie Sanders' name get tossed around a little bit in the chat. I'm a huge Bernie fan. Yeah, yeah, um, sir. Uh, I'm, a Demo I'm a democratic socialist and I lean towards a lot of, of, of communist ideologies. And one of them being that the, the workers who, who, uh, who, who develop the, the, um, the means of the means of the workers should own the means of production, which is like probably the only communist uh, thing that I really believe in, and that is that the workers are the ones who should be getting paid the most because they're the ones who are who are who own the means of of production. So um, someone said that's why Cuba votes red. By the way, they don't like those words. So that you know, I do think that messaging is very important, right? Like I could yeah. agree with the idea, but if you message it wrong, I think we saw that kind of with defund the police where everybody took it and ran as like, oh, you're just going to completely eliminate police precincts <laughs> where the real idea was, hey, let's take some of this money and yeah. let's divert it to mental health counselors or yeah. other resources that could come here. Oh, uh, so when you Republicans have, are great at taking, yeah, absolutely. And twisting it, yeah. So yeah, like, absolutely. what do you think are better ways where we don't say those words and it can't just be super misconstrued right off the bat because they're going to misconstrue things no matter what. But Absolutely. I do think when like, you know, we saw it with Biden, they were trying to paint him as like a communist and a socialist. And it never landed because the dude's just not like he's in fucking politics like 800 years. Like we know his record. You can't just be like this dude's a communist out of nowhere when he's has like a provable record of obviously not being a fucking communist. Like, so I yeah. do think that there are ways to message ideas where it's like, hey, they can't mudsling as much as they would have anyway because they're going to do it no matter what but the what do you think the problem like well the problem with communism is that people use communism as a scare word but it's not communism that they're afraid of it's the, the authoritarianism and that's what really is the problem in cuba is the authoritarianism that's the problem in russia that's the problem in venezuela it's authoritarianism and the day that the, the day that americans uh you know for regardless of where they're from whether they're are, are cuban americans or or uh it doesn't matter. Americans in general understand the difference between authoritarianism and what communism truly was supposed to be, because there's there's never been a true form of communism. It hasn't it hasn't existed. It's never happened. Um, but you have Cuba, for example, who are who are on the brink of curing AIDS. But we are not allowed to talk about that because they are a, they are a communist country. Mm -hmm. um, and and while a lot of them do flee, um, a, a lot of them uh, uh, come here and they do, they settle in, in places like Florida and there, the, it is a huge red population out there. And a lot of it has to do with the negativity that comes around growing up in an authoritarian country, not communism. Communism means the worker gets paid. That's what, the, that's what communism really stands for. You produce, you get paid, right? And not so much your bosses, but you. So the, until the day that we can actually take the wording and actually figure out what it stands for and what it means will be the day that we actually, you know, can figure out messaging. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I, the reason why, and here's the thing, the reason why I like to say the word communism is because it does trigger a lot of people and it makes people go, well, hold on a second. And it's like, well, no, hold on. Like, so do you believe in this? It's like, well, that's, I don't believe in that. You know, that's what you're describing is authoritarianism and I don't believe in that, but that is the direction that we're heading towards. We're heading towards, um, a, we're, we're heading towards um, corporatism and authoritarianism where the, the people who are at the top continue to make a, a, an obscene amount of money and oh, the workers are the ones that get blamed or the president gets blamed. You see a lot of these things like the uh, Biden is to blame for the rise in gas prices. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one. Now, here's the thing. Gas is privatized and it's always been privatized. The government has nothing to do with the price of gas and the government doesn't do anything about purchasing gas. So why is Biden to blame? Well, you can't talk about this mm -hmm. without sounding like you're like, like, like sounding like you're, I don't know, like you're out of touch mm -hmm. because of course Biden raised the gas prices. He's the president. When gas is good, it, the president's doing good. <laughs> when gas is bad, the, the president's doing bad. That's mm -hmm. just the way it is. That's America. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Well, no, pay attention to the buyers and the sellers. The reason why I bring that up, I don't know if you live in a state with fracking. Do, uh, do they do they talk about yeah? Uh, do they talk about fracking in New York? 
uh, it's been pretty like um, like I don't think there's that many permits. I think it's if there is any fracking, it's very limited. Uh, yeah. I know that the the governor who just ran for the Republicans would have opened that shit up. Like that was one of his big mm. talking points. Our governor uh, right now doesn't want any kind of fracking. Um, Gavin Newsom, no fracking in California, mm -hmm. or no additional fracking in California. And the way people are trying to get uh, get people to vote for fracking is by saying, Do you, "Don't you want to lower gas prices?" And I just want to stand there and be like, "You're an idiot," because if we do start fracking here. We're not going to see that oil. We're going to continue to sell it Export out of the it. country yeah. the mm -hmm. way we've always done. We've never domestically kept our oil. It's never happened. There's no profit in that. We buy from cheaper countries and we sell to other countries. But you can't have these conversations because it's 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 too complicated for them to understand. Mm -hmm. Instead, they want no regulations. They want to be able to do what they want. They want, you know, they don't care about our water. They don't care about, you know, uh, these man-made earthquakes that are very real. Um, it's 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 very frustrating. It, and and and, uh, and I appreciate the gotcha questions that I'm getting, but I'm just, I'm not going to fall for them because I'm not a Democrat. You know, mm -hmm. not from you, but like these yeah, questions yeah. about about left and right and like and like what what you know what 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 should we do then? Mm -hmm. It's 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 more complicated than just the the left and right because they're both unfortunately they're both trash and. <laughs> To further, I mean, the, the main question that you asked me was what should the Democrats do with their messaging? Yeah, they yeah. should figure it out. They don't have they don't have true yeah. messaging. They don't have they don't have true messaging. Mm -hmm. They're not aligned on anything, which is crazy because they had like so many good things that they did. Like I sit at work sometimes and like I'll talk to coworkers that are uh, I'm more on the conservative side. And I'm like, dude, you know, like they talk about base Biden and stuff. And it's kind of true. Like, you know, and I'll list off like the good things that I think he's done and stuff. And they're just like, nah, he's fucking old. And I'm just like, oh, God, like it's pure optics. Like if the dude looks old, he's bad. And like. You know, I know uh, a lot of family members where it's the same thing, where it's just like, ese viejito, él no es presidente, blah, blah, blah. not that he's not president, like he didn't win the election, but like that he's not fit to be a president because he's old as fuck. And I'm always just like, look, at that age, 79 or whatever, I'm going to be way fucking worse. Like, I can run the fucking <laughs> strongest country in the fucking world. Like, I couldn't yeah. be Biden right now. I'm going to no be way. fucking super old in a wheelchair. Like, so that's yeah, amazing. I'll be shitting myself. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what's going to happen. You know? Um. And hold on here. Okay, so I asked somebody in the in the chat what they thought the appeal of conservatism was, just so that I could sure. get you know uh, that side of the conversation as well. I don't sure. think it's an appeal. I think that some people are just tired of pandering white knight talking points from the blue side, and maybe they have voted blue and their cities are still fucked. Is some of the things I have heard from people on the fence. Okay, so that's some of the talking points. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. Like it, this is one of those things where people don't look at like red state crime and like you look at it and it's like some of the worst and highest crime rates are in like missouri and like these mm -hmm. places that are like deep red states but for some reason nobody ever just talks about them we talk about you know cities and stuff places that have like six to seven million people in them where it's extremely exactly. hard to 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 govern them because it's just exactly. so many fucking people uh persona said i'm an independent voter by the way just to get you some context thank you that for that persona um yeah, man, I don't know. Like, I think like, I think of New York City, and I honestly am always just like, how can we fix this? And, like, how can we fix, like, the issues that are troubling people, which is, like, crime on the subway, uh, homelessness, like... And I just don't think that, like, you know, voting for the other party would make a difference. Like, I just think there are some problems that are innate problems to the environment that you're in. You're in a giant city with 7 million people that it's expensive as fuck to live in. It's, uh, you know, we raised our minimum wage to $15, but a studio apartment can run you, like, $1,500. You're not going to make that with just minimum wage. Like, these are problems that I don't think any party could fix. And, like, that's always the problem that i have where it's just like dude this is not a you know this side is gonna fix it or this side is gonna fix it this is just a fucking huge problem mm -hmm. yeah uh, uh it, it it, it you, there's always there's always um that kind of divide of you they want an answer though and i think that's what it is and uh you know what what do we what do we do about drug dealing in the subway um you ask a democrat and you say uh you know Unfortunately, there's probably there's probably no there's no one answer to what do you do with drug dealing on the subway. Mm -hmm. but you ask a Republican, and it's uh, well, yes. obviously all drug dealers deserve the death penalty. Yeah, and that's where that's where the extremes lie. Um, as an independent voter myself, um, but one who's a, a, a more progressive, um, 
I'm not going to look at the idea of killing an individual uh, as an answer, as a good answer. And that is a real answer that, that Donald Trump gave. Mm -hmm. He thinks that all drug dealers deserve the death penalty. Mm -hmm. um, that to me is brain broken. And anybody who responds to that positively has never thought critically about anything in their life, repercussions, anything. So I don't take I don't take Republicans seriously. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if it's not messaging, because it's obviously that they don't have any messaging, what just issues in general do you think they should focus on? Like, uh, I know at the beginning of this segment, you said uh, working class issues is yeah. something that can just permeate all races, just like bring us all together under this umbrella. Um, yeah, you know, what it should are, be working class issues. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So like health care. Yeah, it should be universal health care. It should be um, it should be uh, free college for all. It, and it should be it should be a conversation for those of, of who wanted um uh who want their voices actually heard and i think that that when you talk to the normal to the normal voter they don't care about um uh, the craziest things that are happening on like fox news uh they don't care about what trump is pushing what what conspiracies are being talked about they don't care about that what they care about is are they going to be able to pay to to you know take their to their to their kid to the doctor are they mm -hmm. going to be able to uh buy groceries this week yeah um are you know is their job going to lay them off or you know can we have a union that can ensure that my job cannot lay me off um, can we talk about a living wage? Because I bust my ass for 40 hours a fucking week and my job still won't give me uh, health care. Like those are the types of things that, that the normal voter want to talk about. That's mm -hmm. what they care about. And if you talk about these sort of things to a, a, a real individual and you actually go on the ground and you do some real grassroots campaigning, you're going to get more positive results than negative. Now, of course, there's always going to be those fringe voters who ask you about the most obscene things mm -hmm. um, or maybe even not so obscene, but things that you probably aren't going to be able to address right away. And you're going to have to, you know, think about it. And I think that that's when we start divide, when, when you start getting those New, so the new, the new, the media controls the narrative. So as soon as you start getting the the news media, whether it's the left or the right, start talking about race questions and that sort of stuff. They're billionaires. Everybody yeah. on the news are millionaires. They're doing that because they know that if we continue these types of narratives and conversations, they're going to be the ones who end up taxed more while the working class gets taxed left, less. So what happens? The racial divide happens. So it's no longer class versus class, which is essentially how it should be because the working class, the, the, the ones who need the living wage and who shouldn't be taxed as much and should be able to bring home more I guarantee you, you and I get taxed more than any millionaire or billionaire out there. They, the, the people who make the most money get taxed the least and almost less than a percent. Most of them get ta taxed less than a percent. I guarantee you the next time you folks in the chat, if any of you work or myself or you, Zave, look at your paycheck. Mm -hmm. We get taxed 30 percent at yeah, minimum yeah. Mm -hmm. of our of, of our income. That's bullshit. That is not correct. Yeah, we work so hard for our money, and we don't see any of it. We are in a we are in a housing crisis in California. We have no homes. Actually, the whole the whole country is in a housing crisis right now. Mm -hmm. We have no homes to rent to buy. A lot of us can't afford to buy, mm -hmm. and it's because we're not making the money. Uh, there's this, there's there's an issue with inflation right now. There's it's an artificial inflation, and a lot of it is just being. Uh, a lot of it is just being um, uh, a lot of the prices are being raised right now out of basically saying we can we can do this yeah, we can yeah. raise our we can raise our prices and people are going to continue to and blame it on inflation but it's an artificial inflation right now and there's no repercussions for that either and there should be there should be and that's why i have a really big problem with the libertarian view of of, of you know the free market will regulate itself no it fucking won't yeah. No, it won't. We need actual government interference in something like this because guess who's getting shafted? You and I. And the people who want to blame the Democrats for this are fucking blind because the corporations can do whatever the fuck they want and they want more of this shit. Isn't that shit so frustrating, man? Like, yes, it's very you frustrating. Could, you could talk about all of these things and then have someone turn around and be like, yeah, but so-and-so got banned off of Twitter and that was because of the liberals. And it's just like, God fucking damn it! This it, shit doesn't it, affect us! <laughs> It's very brain broken to even think that a, a, a private company, uh, it, to even think that a private company 
owes you any kind of platform uh, or even even uh, freedom of speech for that matter, if you think a private company owes you anything like that, then you're brain broken. And to ever think to ever bring the First Amendment into a private uh, into a private platform like Facebook or Twitter, um, it's completely uh, it's 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 just it's frustrating because they don't see the bigger picture. They don't under, They don't actually. They actually do not understand what's happening in the political space for them to say something like that. And they vote. They're the ones who vote. They wake up early. They go to the voting place, and then they tell everybody who voted early because of the fact that um, because of the fact that we have to work and we need to mail in our ballot. That suddenly we're the ones who are committing voter fraud. They can get fucked for that. For sure, bro. And then there was a good question earlier. Um, would you use physical violence to stop machismo like i i think it like at what do you support what is it like political unrest and like what type of protests do you support uh i had this conversation with someone recently because i've been seeing like those stop oil protests where they throw the soup and shit on the on the paintings or they'll yeah. go around and they'll spray paint like lamborghini dealerships and shit like what kind of protests do you tend to lean towards like liking more and you think is more appropriate um, I think that protests are um, a reflection of the of the political environment. Uh, I have no idea what the soup thing is. I think that's I think that's stupid. I don't because the, I don't. They're throwing soup at Van Gogh paintings and shit. I don't get it. I don't understand why they're doing that. So for, <laughs> it's for like me, to bring now, attention, man. It's just to bring attention to it. They throw it and then they you know they record themselves giving like a a speech saying like you know what is art worth and like is it worth global and like, you know it's just to bring attention to it. No, I think that's dumb. Uh, I, unfortunately, I think I think that's a waste of time. I think that they can they can do something better with their platform if that's what they really want. They can tie themselves to um, an oil rig for all I care. That's that, I mean I think that a lot of it should be nonviolent, and uh, I think that one of the best forms of protests are are, are reactions. Um, to the the political scope so i don't understand the first half of your question do i do i think that uh, um oh just violence? like yeah political violence like uh do you you know do you think it's appropriate i guess like in order like to, which, to stop I, I, guess. I guess i need an example um yeah the example they gave earlier was machismo but i i don't know leo get your ass in here what, what did you mean by that question until he gets back though um something from yeah. persona the thing that hurts me at a human level is that no matter what the politicians the ones that rule will always be okay, and we get fucked no matter what. Yeah, man, like, there yeah. should really be something tied to, like, whenever, like, Congress is, like, whenever they're giving those warnings, like, oh, Congress is in danger of being shut down if they don't pass a bill. Like, those motherfuckers should really have their salaries frozen at that point. Like, there should be, yeah. like, there's so many times where I'm just like, you know what? Put the pressure on these motherfuckers because, like, they're taking, like, three-week recesses right after Roe v. Wade is, like, uh, uh, overturned and shit. And the whole right. country is freaking out about, like, hey, what are you guys going to do? You're still in power, but you might not be in power in a couple months. So do some shit right now. Like, meanwhile, you guys yeah. are on recess. So there should definitely be, like, more uh, just accountability for holding. Like, you know, I think the only accountability we really have over these people is just voting right now and like sometimes people feel like their vote doesn't matter but i always tell people you know even if you're in the bluest or the reddest of places go and vote uh i don't think demographic voting patterns are permanent you know a lot of has been said about desantis and latinos in florida but you know you read the articles and it's like he's the first republican to win like miami dade county <laughs> since 2002 so like that's a county that hillary won that's a county that biden won with less than hillary but still won it obama was able to win florida in 2012 so you know these things aren't permanent yeah um i think that uh florida is a disappointment a lot of the times so here's a question uh, cause I've seen people, I've seen people online talking about this, people that are Latino, uh, content creators and they just say, give up on Florida. Like, you know, that's it. That state is gone. Like, what do you think about that? Because Republicans could have done that. You know, they could have just said like, this state will never be ours or whatever, but, right. but instead they just doubled down. They kept putting more money into it, kept running more Spanish, uh, speaking ads and they kept putting more groundwork into it to now where they're seeing some turns like. Do you think you just give up on a state like that where it's like when it's very deep red or do you double down and try and win it over? Um, I think I'd have to take a look at the voting demographic and see. I I, I honestly think that um, Latino conservatives in Florida will never flip um, because I, I think a lot of it has to do with um, pride, messaging, um, 
um, this kind of like pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality. Yeah. Us versus them. Um, you know, we, you know, we're here, but the illegals want to come and take this away from me. Um, rhetoric. Um, I think that a lot, a lot of it has to do with that. Unfortunately. Do you, uh, um, I'm sorry. Did you, uh, feel that growing up within from people in your family? Like, because for sure, I felt like this, uh, idea of, you know, we're in this country and here you can work hard and you can make it to be yeah. anybody. Just put your head down. And like, my uncle is a great example of this. This dude is just like, no matter what, like all political systems could be against him. Like all tax codes be against him. He'll still be like, nah, you just got to work hard. You just got to keep working hard and you'll be able to get it where it's like, um, you know, yeah. was that a, like a presence, uh, around you a lot when you were growing up? Like, just kind of like, you know, be happy to be so. here. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think a lot of it also comes from, um, my family who would come and visit and, and work uh, illegally. Um, and just to send money back home and then go home. Um, but it's very interesting, um, the thought process behind that. And I remember uh, when I was 18, my uncle uh, persuaded me to apply for the Border Patrol. And I was 18 and I needed a job, or maybe I was older, but either either way, yeah, I was older. But either way, I, I passed and I, and then I, I got a, um, a letter back and said, hey, you know, we're ready to accept you, but your license expired. My license literally expired um, like a month after. And I renewed my license and I didn't go and get that job. And the reason why he was pushing me was because, you know, you could be one of the good ones on the inside. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of naive to think that you can change a whole system from the inside. Mm -hmm. um, systems don't get changed from the inside. That's just not how it works. Um, I feel like the system <clears throat> changes people like good intention. People's go in there and now all of a sudden they're just like, well, you know, this is how it is. We got to send mm -hmm. some back and like, we got to keep this closed and like, correct. You have they, to do your job. They're now the others. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't do your job, then guess what? You lose your job and mm -hmm. now you're, you're back out on your ass. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have no respect for border patrol. I think that they are, um, I, I, be, and here, and I know a lot of people are like, wait, wait, what do you mean? Well, I live in California and we have um, what's called, well, actually, technically, the entire country has this. Uh, we have what's called um, the no constitution zone. So 100, 100 miles inwards from, from any border is a no constitution zone. That means a border patrol agent can question you unconstitutionally uh, if they have any form of kind of like reason to question you right can, so, so like kind of like uh just profiling they can search and, yeah they can profile you they can search and seizure you without a warrant because it's a no it's a no constitution zone so any any place 100 miles from any border um uh they can do that and i have no respect for that that means that if they bring their dog they they give it a little they give it a little nudge to make sure that it, it, it barks at, at a part of your car uh, they can now search your entire car and um, it's just another form of harassment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we are citizens. We are individuals. We are people. We have our rights. But to them, we don't have any rights. Um, and uh, and I have a problem with that. And to, and to think that I was going to be a part of that institution uh, makes me a little bit sick on the inside because I know that I probably would have been put in situations that I didn't want to be put in. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh here real quick from uh queen and leo border patrol exclamation mark question mark the saddest thing about the 100 mile zone is that it's completely constitutional the courts have ruled the border is just different national security and border policy go hand in hand i actually no. never knew about that i no, had no that's stupid. Ever idea. i'm not def that's stupid to say that it's constitutional is fucking bullshit i'm a citizen i have a constitutional right um and no, just because you're a border patrol agent doesn't mean that you can come into my car just because you feel like it. That's I imagine stupid. what they meant by constitutional is like the Supreme Court has taken it up and defended it using the Constitution, like as yeah, their, of course. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, they can write any law they want. Exactly, that's that's, yeah. that's that's just how it works. But um, and we've I, now seen like it all just depends on who's at the court on, at that time. Like it's no, very political. They'll defend driven. it. They'll defend it every time. That yeah. is that is the law. The the 100 mile zone is the law. Like even if it was like let's say six liberal judges on there, yeah, because it's it is the law. Mm -hmm. It's just a stupid law, Damn. and it makes it makes no sense. The way and the way that they the way that they describe it's like well you know 
we gotta we gotta be careful of MS thirteen. Well, the yeah, one hundred yeah, drugs the, the, and the, stuff. The, yeah, the one hundred mile zone is not just the southern border; it's also the northern border. So you tell me how many MS thirteen. Uh, um, you know, it's harder to get into the Canadian, into Canada as an American than it is for, for, um, us to go back and forth between Mexico. So who's the, who's, who's the real problem here? I think mm -hmm. it's us actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Quinn, this is what I thought. I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just saying the courts are like, yeah, this is makes sense based on the constitution. Like that's just their justification. Yeah. Here's no, off yeah. from persona. How do we better the situation for people trying to cross the border and make sure that they aren't raped and human trafficked and killed? How do we better that situation? Uh, um, <laughs> that's a, that that shit is extremely difficult and i know a couple people that have crossed the border and who have taken that uh, that chance it's, literally there's no like crazy logic behind this it's because hey the place that i live right now is so fucked that i would rather take the chance and whatever may happen on the way to america i'd rather do that than to stay here and my family get killed by or uh, uh either hunger or just like gangs that, that are can... you saying are you saying cross the border this way uh that's what i was saying yeah okay i got i got i got very confused um well we and it's sad man it's like you hear these stories and they're just like Dude, what else would you do for your family? Like, if your family was in a situation where they wouldn't be able to survive or thrive right. or to succeed, you're going to move and you're going to do whatever. You're going to migrate to put them in a bitter situation. We also have to look at the immigration policy that we have right now. And we have a president right now who has actually um, deported... Yeah. What's that? Yeah. I was going to say he's just continued a lot of like the Trump era stuff, but the Republicans... Yeah, he, well, he's, he's deported more people um, than Trump ever has. Um, but that's that's neither here nor there. It's it, the unfortunate thing is we don't have uh, we don't have a streamlined form of immigration, and we have people who are just waiting, um, who uh, and are in very very poor conditions because we'd rather just keep them waiting and probably hoping that they give up and go back. And it's a very strange uh, situation. So if we if if we change the the immigration policy and we actually made it easier for people who are looking for um, you know a. a, a, a Oh my gosh, what's it called when you're when you're uh, seeking asylum? Well, we actually cared about you know the people who are seeking asylum and gave them um, the chance that they deserve. Um, then those things wouldn't happen. Uh, but the problem is uh, the reason why people are finding alternative ways and are probably getting um, you know uh, abducted or even worse is because um, they were turned back when they were seeking asylum, and that's that's an issue. If you're going to risk it all for that, then obviously that there's something there is something that they want to get away from. And yeah, man. Uh, and here's the thing, um, you wouldn't risk that for financial asylum, economic asylum. You wouldn't risk that for economic asylum. There's something worse happening in their life for them to, to, to risk that. So we need to actually take that seriously and we need to streamline it. We need to take a serious look at our immigration and our immigration policy. Um, but a lot of it gets swept under the rug and I think that's the biggest problem. That's a good question. I, I it, it threw me for a loop because I wasn't sure which direction you were talking about. I thought you were talking about Americans going south of the border. Oh, no. Like, yeah, that's clearly just like happening. Like nobody yeah. seems to be stopping that or even talking about that really. Or nobody really even talks about how uh, so many Americans will go to Mexico now to get abortion pills, to get abortions, to get any type of health care. I know so many people that have d said like, sure. you know what? I'm going to go to Latin America and get this procedure done because even with insurance in the United States, it's still cheaper for me to buy a flight go to that country stay there and get this medical procedure done mm -hmm. than to fucking do it here in america and like that's the crazy stuff about the system where it's just like mm -hmm. um, yeah my mom gets all her dentistry done in mexico gets it done in Mexico. yeah because you know like they have Only dentists there people people do dentist they, work there they have state-of-the-art dentists there yeah. they have some of the nicest uh, dental offices out there and very affordable but that's sure. but their health care isn't as privatized as it is here mm -hmm. it's so we more subsidized we, and just the, the government yeah. puts money into it uh right yeah and yeah, yeah. we what we end up and what happens is that we have um a privatized a healthcare system and everything is um very very expensive the fact yeah. of the matter is uh we need yeah we need to look at our 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 um our healthcare system and, and completely revamp it as well yes sir and i know you gotta go soon so i'm gonna give yeah. you a couple last questions uh somebody earlier in the chat said uh asked this but i never got to it what do you no think problem. best latin american food like what country where's that food coming <laughs> from uh mexican food man mexican food mexican, mexican. food is delicious especially in california <laughs> so you got some bias I mean, take there i am biased we have some <laughs> of the best mexican food here in, in southern california because um 
you know, Mexicans bring their food with them. I actually don't, I don't try a lot of foods and I think I probably um, need to. Um, I know that I want, I, I would love to try, uh, I want to try a staple from, from, from everywhere. So you'll, you'll have to recommend me something. For sure, I'll try man. It. I love Thai Somewhere food. good. Huh? Thai food. Love Thai food. I mean, I mean like, uh, um, oh, so like that I dish? can answer the Hispanic food question. Oh, okay. Okay. Another um, time. Hey, another time. I got you. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this just like about rounding back to like the Florida and the DeSantis thing. Like it looks very clear that, uh, at least the Republican establishment is going to start lining up behind him. They kind of saw how Trump was just a disaster for the midterms. Didn't bring on that red wave that they hoped for because a lot of his candidates were just fucking insane people that like, it was just too far for the public. The public was just like, you are still talking about an election that you claim was stolen two years ago that multiple court cases have said was not stolen. And it was just like, you know, those candidates were just too crazy. I think we saw a good track record of his candidates just that he endorsed going down. Uh, it looks like DeSantis is going to be that guy for 2024. They're going to start backing up uh, behind him. He seems awesome. very popular in Florida. Seems like he could take that message to uh, other parts of the country. He's that, more like, dangerous than Trump. So I really I, I really need people to pay very close attention to DeSantis because um, he's Trump was off the rocker. But DeSantis is pure evil. Yeah, so, he's I mean, competent with it. He's like an actual evil politician, not like a yeah. buffoon. Here's mm -hmm. a good question, actually, uh, since it's your governor. Do you think Newsom could take him? I would, uh, I like would support Newsom appeal, if he ran. appeal he, across the country. Because I, the first thing I always think the, of with Newsom is that yeah. French laundry shit, like him talking about the lockdown orders and then being caught at that. Just like he seems like one of those like limousine Democrats. Like, yeah, um, he's becoming more, I think, tolerable uh, with a lot of his policies lately. Um, because for the long time, I just knew Newsom as, uh, just as, yeah, like, as you say, just like, just, a, just like an, another Democrat. Um, he really has, I, I've paid closer attention to him lately, um, with, uh, with a lot of his, uh, policies, but of course he was, he was running, he was running to be reelected. So I'm sure that took a lot that, that was probably a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Um, what surprises me is that Newsom has, um, you know, um, national appeal of any of any sort honestly because i just look at him as my governor you know like yeah, i don't yeah. really i don't i don't think about him like that dude that's how um, i used to feel about cuomo i was like what the fuck yeah. like people, cuomo's <laughs> an actual viable candidate but uh um, yeah people love cuomo for a bit i think that uh for lack of the better terms um i think that newsom needs to be uh groomed by <laughs> by somebody more progressive yeah uh, <laughs> if, he, if he if he would ever have a chance to be honest i think that he needs to really um dial in more progressive talking points. He needs to talk about um, uh, uh, criminal justice reform. He needs to talk about, um, you know, for uh, uh, marijuana le uh, legalization across the country. He needs to talk about um, a living wage. He needs to talk about um, Medicare for all. He he really needs to take a more progressive approach to a lot of his talking points mm -hmm. if he'll ever have. Uh, viability and I and I say that about him but I say that about every candidate any any Democratic candidate because the Democrats need to go they're gonna call us and I'm saying us because I vote Democrat very often because I'd be damned if I ever vote Republican mm -hmm. but they the Democrats need to go more socialist because they're gonna be called communists regardless mm -hmm. so they might as well go further left and guess what the further left you go you get your guns back baby so if you want somebody who's gonna say you know right to carry that's not that far from uh from from uh socialism uh -huh. so you know if you want if you want right to carry that's fine but let's do it so that it's it's a safe way of getting your gun you know universal background checks longer holding periods uh making sure that people who can't pass a psychological exam doesn't get a gun um you know it, it, what's very interesting is that a lot of these um a lot of these places where these tragedies occur where they get these guns um, and they, if they do happen in a place where it's hard to get a gun, they go to a neighboring state where it's easy to get a gun, yep. and then they bring the gun over. But people, but people don't talk about that. Fox News will never talk about that. And for whatever reason, the mainstream media just completely glosses over it. Mm -hmm. So that's hey, just... Yeah. yeah, no, all right, good answer. I, I needed to know from somebody who lives in California, like how he's viewed. Um, I thought I thought uh, that dude Fetterman from Pennsylvania would have been a good choice until uh, 
he had the unfortunate stroke. Maybe he will <clears> recover. <throat> I just think someone like that has oh, like yeah. some good. Have, did you hear his victory speech? No, I didn't get to hear it yet. Did he? I heard. You listen cry. to it. It's if good? you ever want to know if he'll recover, he's recovered. He's nice. he's a hell of a speaker. Hell Look, yeah. he he's a Harvard graduate, and he he you know he had a lot of great opportunities. Um, but he is he is a, a, the working class guy and yeah. the thing is he understands pennsylvania's he pennsylvanians he my there are some things that are a little bit um you know like he supports fracking which is whatever pennsylvania supports fracking you need yeah. to listen you need to listen to your voters mm -hmm. that's basically what it comes down to if you're not going to listen to your voters and you're just not going to win and granted there are things i don't think fetterman's the best but i think he's great and i'm very thankful that he won because we really yeah. we really needed that state to, to turn it, the fact that the fact that it wasn't a red wave as predicted is a miracle That's because there's never been a time where that where a a a president has polled this poorly during the midterms that there wasn't a clear takeover from the Republican Party. So this yes, I think this goes to show that the the party of Trump is dead. I don't think there's I don't think that I don't think Trump is has as much pull as he thought he did and I think that the Republicans going forward are going to start really truly pulling away from uh, from the big steel rhetoric and uh, and and the the MAGA uh, bullshit, I think it's going to go back to traditional Republicans, and that's just the way the pendulum works. We went full on crazy. It's time to go back a little bit more sane for that. Yep, yep, yep. All right, time will tell, man. Hey, thank you so yep. much for coming on. You got any closing yeah, words? Uh, you know what? I got a little bit uh, impassioned. I hope nobody took anything uh, too personally. If you folks want to know uh, anything else about me, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, it's me, John B. Um, and uh, in all honesty, I want the best for everybody out there. So if there's if there's uh, ever a reason why we don't meet eye to eye, I think that we you just need to take a look at where where your uh, where your priorities stand as an American when you vote. Um, and I think. And I personally think that it's time for all of us to listen to the causes and not the fears, right? So um, if you're if if you if you like a candidate because he tells you to hate somebody else or to not trust somebody else, um, I feel sorry for you, and you should probably look into some. Hey, yeah. Hey, I will say, man, I I was hesitant to talk about politics for a long time. I did it before I started Twitch streaming. Uh, mm -hmm. I talked about politics until I got burnt out during the 2020 election. And I was like, fuck this. I'm going to go on Twitch and play video games. And it's going to be my escape from fucking <laughs> shitty politics. Sure. But you made today feel really fucking cool, man. Like, I yeah. forgot how much I enjoy talking about this stuff. Uh, there's a lot of times where I'll stream and I play games. And I'm just like, what did I do today, man? Like, sure. there's nothing I could do with this content afterwards. I'm not going to look at this again. I'm not going to watch it. Like, But this stuff is the type of stuff where I'm like, evergreen and courtney said that earlier like all your content on youtube is evergreen you can watch it at any given time and it'll mm -hmm. still be relevant and it'll still be fun to watch and like that's how this felt man thank you so much for coming on yeah man and uh if you ever want me on again you want to talk about i appreciate the the bouncing back and forth i appreciate you uh knowing which topics you wanted to talk about because sometimes it's easy to just get uh uh, really lost in 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 kind of like all of the craziness that's happening. So I appreciate you um, n n knowing which way to navigate and and uh, and uh, which um, you know which topics you want to talk about. It really hel it helped my ADHD brain. So thank you. Hey, thank you so much for coming on, bro. Have a good night. Yep. Have a good one. Have a good show later too. Peace. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be live on uh, we'll be live on YouTube. Uh, Talk Limited TV LKLTD. Maybe we'll see you all there. Yes, sir. Have a good night, man. Take care. Later, man. Talk Bye. to you soon.